brothers and sisters. So I just got done reading a pretty good read um, from an article um, from pre-trib.org called uh, The Meaning of Angels in Revelation 2 and 3. And um, most, most of what I read, and I've kind of accepted it myself, that the angels in Revelation 2 and 3 are um, like leaders of the church, like human leaders. But after reading this, um, it brings that into question a lot. Um, that doesn't have to be the interpretation. In fact, that might not be the correct interpretation at all. Um, you know, the, Rev the book of Revelation mentions angels a lot. It mentions angel right off the bat in the first verse. And um, every time that angel is mentioned, it, it means an angel, a heavenly being. Um, but people will take uh, the angels in chapter 2 and 3 to mean... Um, you know, the church leaders. Um, but nowhere in the Bible does it speak of a ruling, uh, a single bishop ruling over elders. Um, it's always like a plurality of elders uh, leading the church. So, that kind of goes against that idea. Plus the fact that angels are always angels everywhere else. Um, plus the fact, Jesus specifically says that the seven golden candlesticks are the the seven are seven churches and he says that the seven stars are um, angels of the seven churches so he says that the stars represent angels and then people take it to say well the angels represent pastors or bishops or whatever so that that that's not there that's just adding to the text and um, you know I mean Jesus straight up describes what they are an angel should be an angel, but it's kind of hard to wrap our minds around why does it say unto the angels of the church of Ephesus write? It makes it sound like Jesus is telling John to write to them, and that wouldn't make sense if it was a heavenly being. Um, so I'm just going to sum summarize, uh, this article is pretty good, it talks about a lot of stuff in the Old Testament, compares a lot of things, it's pretty long. Um, but it says, you know, these letters are open evaluation reports. Um, the seven letters of the seven churches also fit uh, this forensic theme involving angelic witnesses and these judicial evaluations is consistent with the role of angels throughout Revelation and is most consistent with the theme of the apocalypse. Um, all seven churches were to receive the entire book of Revelation. All seven churches, therefore, would see the evaluation reports of their neighboring churches, and each would notice that their own report was addressed to an angel somehow assigned to it. It is proposed here that the manner of ad address be interpreted in this manner, the first line to the angel of the church of X write, means that the subsequent report is open to, and is to be known by, the angel linked to that church. The body of the report immediately following is addressed to that particular church itself. In the conclusion of the report, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, broadens the application to all the churches who would eventually read the other's reports. Um, there is no convoluted message process here. The angels did not have to learn God's evaluation via a human letter, but the church is needed to understand that their performance was being reported to an angel watching them. And it gives references 1 Corinthians 4, 9, 11, and 10, and Ephesians 3, 10. Um, and then it, it mentions how in the Old Testament we see some things that are similar. Uh, in Moses' prophetic format, he begins by addressing... The legal witnesses in heaven and earth in Deuteronomy 32.1 and then addresses Israel's covenant violations in both the second and third person. Centuries later, Isaiah brings lawsuit against Israel in the same fashion. In Isaiah 1.2, God charges Israel before the legal witnesses in heaven and earth and follows with addressing Israel directly in the second person as well as indirectly in the third person. Micah, in similar fashion, records God's charges against Israel by addressing first nature as a legal witness and then the nation directly. The background of legal witnesses is involved in human covenant performance. 
Angels are portrayed as observers. They observe the conduct of the church as well as its ministries. Um, so, it is proposed in light of the attested role of angels as legal witnesses throughout Scripture, and especially in Revelation, that their being addressed in the letters can be explained. Just as Israel's writing prophets called upon angels to witness uh, Israel's covenant violations, John is told to call upon angelic observers of the seven churches in the evaluation reports. The churches were expected to soberly reflect upon the realization that their performance was being reported to the same kind of supernatural beings that would eventually execute the coming judgments of God upon heaven and earth. All seven churches would get the big picture as each received the book of Revelation. Each church would see the evaluation reports of the other churches and learn that all of them were invoked in a cosmic, intri cosmic intrigue that extended beyond the redemption of mankind. So, uh, I hope any of that makes sense to you. But I might do other videos going more detail, so uh, I'm probably not going to think anymore that these are pastors, the angels, and kind of baffles myself, why did I ever even think that in the first place? I think it's just because of the context we get that idea, but... Um, I think that this is a pretty valid way to look at it, as this describes. So, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, and um, something to think about. Different way to interpret this. So, um, on my website, eventually, soon, I want to make a section on angelology. So that'll be really interesting, and I'll include a lot of this on there. Um, so, thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.